Hello, my name is Mark from jazzguitarlessons.net and you're watching the vlog for Barry Galbraith's Comping Study Series. This is a volume three book and today is the Minor Blues, which is found on page 11. Uh, ironically enough, this is the only page, the only study in the book with coffee stains in it. My book's totally falling apart, so you have to forgive me. It's a morning. I realize this is a this video was due today, so what I'll be doing, you'll be watching the video first, then I have a few performance notes, there's a few uh, hiccups and a few traps you might fall into while playing this minor blues. So a quick rig rundown, my great Roland Cube 60, which you could drop, sorry, that's a scheduled message, it's crazy, it's still the morning. So Roland Cube 60, Jazz 3 picks, uh, black ones, the Dunlops, and my Godin Montréal. Nothing fancy as usual, so let's get to the playing, and I'll see you after. welcome I hope you enjoyed the performance of it so once again as I'm starting to apologize a little bit uh, these studies are getting a little bit harder uh, and harder and when I record them every two weeks uh, I realize that sometimes I make mistakes and I told myself you know as they say good enough for jazz at some points like oh is it above 80% or 90% and it's good um, you get the idea of course you buy the book you get the CD and you can hear what Barry's playing exactly uh, the advantage of the video here is you can see my fingers uh, so you have to forgive me too there's a piano playing in the house this is teachers training today piano teachers training uh, and you see I'm actually the only one who doesn't really play music in the house here so it's pretty cool so for the minor blues the tempo was 108 so I used the metronome at 54 uh, I used a lot of A uh, open strings because um, the studies in A, right? So the first chord is this, and this you might remind yourself of. Uh, Stairway to Heaven, right? So, and you get a lot of these movements, but while the A string was open, I'm like, hey, you know, it's right there, might as well pluck it. So I'm thinking about bar one, uh, bar four in the study also, and some other places where I just 
I couldn't resist. The first thing I believe you have to be conscious of that's a different step from all the other previous studies in the book is inner voice movement. So we'll start to look at bar one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Bar seven where you have this. So there is a voice that moves while the chord is held on the top, which necessitate that you reconfigure your fingering. So you have to start like this, go like this and like that. So this is the, I think this is the feature of this study. The chord progression is really cool. He varies it a tiny bit from course to course, but this, uh, starting with bar seven, you get this movement. Then you have a G and you get this movement. So here. Then the bar after you get. So you get. So think about this, you get. So you get these three note descending chromatic tones, but they're inside the line. So the phrase is kind of carried. And this is one of the, the, the traps I think students, private students fall into when they're, they're looking at these studies. They, they pro perform the chords right, but they don't render this sort of inner melody we don't really hear it, so I'll, I'll just play that part for you, starting with bar seven, three, and four. So you still hear ba do ba this. This is a, an ultimate conclusion to, to to this sequence of melody. So this this happens a, a few times. Also notice. A, it will be hard to execute if you're only strumming. I'm gonna take a look at the second page, the very last staff, the very last system of the second page where you see D minor nine. So you play this chord. There is the fourth string that you kind of bar, but you can't play. And this is difficult to do with a pick, so you might do pick first, something like. Uh, that might be a solution. Uh, other than that, uh, another call call and response type of idea happens on the second line of the second page where you get D minor, C minor, B minor, seven flat five. So careful with the rhythm as it's the same idea of... So here's the rhythm, one, two, starting with D minor, sorry. One, two, three, four, ten. So uh, three, four, one, This is another part that's really tricky for a lot of students, and we've addressed this in the previous studies. Is when you have two eight notes on beat four, such as what ha what happens right after in the second line of the second page. You get this, then four and four and. Make sure you really. You're really lazy on that four and. This is uh, a way to phrase it that sounds like forward motion. Uh, other than that, <clears throat> there's my favorite chord in the piece, and I think I'll leave it at that because all the other chords are this less of a riff based thing as the, the F blues or the other. It's more like, okay, new voicings, interesting rhythmic ideas. So this is my favorite chord right there. Well, not actually, they're all like all chords are my favorite chord. You can find this at the very last chord of the third. Staff, second page, where it's E7, sharp 5, sharp 9. I just want to deconstruct this and I'll let you go after. So, when you first look at it, you realize this chord has six notes, which means you will have to cover all six strings uh, to get it. And I'll bring your attention to the top part first because you get this. This might sound familiar because this is a C major triad actually. So, you get a C major triad on the top three strings and then you get this at the bottom and the open E. So this is the third and seven of the E, so just an E shell basically, and a C major triad on top. So we could say C major is that upper structure triad from that E seven altered notes and the, the result is you have the sharp nine and you have the sharp, uh, sharp nine and sharp five, that's right. And it's difficult because your second finger has to partially bar this spot. So take your time with it, plus there's a melody line, it goes... Uh, sorry, so... And 
it appears a second time, very last chord on the last page, on the second system. It's the same chord, but there's no open E. I think I probably struck open E by accident when I played this part, so all good. Um, few notes with open strings and last very very last note at the end I couldn't stop my metronome because my metronome was lying on top of my amp but you get this phrase after the last chord it goes then goes right this is a rubato phrase and he goes up the A melodic minor scale and the last few few lines are uh, harmonized as a third as a se sequence of thirds so this guy then this chord, which you might recognize like a D, as a D, uh, D13. In fact, it's with an open A string, uh, string, so it's A minor 6, 9 with an 11th on top. That's a mouthful. <laughs> and you have this note here. And the note is actually a G sharp. So what it gives is an A minor 6, 9, 11 with, a, with that note and he strikes it as an artificial harmonic on the ninth fret of the bottom string. So for those of you who are not familiar with this, what you need to do actually is point your finger right at the ninth fret, like right on top of the fret, so not actually the, the metal part of the fret you have to point to. And then you strike, you you don't even press it, you just, you, you're just right above it, you just kind of touch it. And then you strike with your thumb under. My thumb is right here, and I go, so the pick is unrelated to this. I just go, try it out, it's cool. Especially when you, you hold the chord down. There you go. So that's it for the minor blues for Barry Galbraith. So once again, forgive the piano in the background, forgive the fact that I'm not shaved, I probably need a shower, and uh, forgive my, this is my friend Carlos at Conversion Surge. If you have a website and you wanna work on stuff, and uh, you know, get more visitors and such, contact uh, Conversion Search. I will see you in two weeks for Out of Nowhere, which doesn't have any coffee stains on it. As always, please do subscribe to this YouTube channel for more free lessons. We have the hands-on series ongoing. Please visit jazzguitarlessons.net and please keep me posted. If you have any sort of questions regarding this, you can find the Barry Galbraith blog uh, with all the studies, there's a YouTube playlist, which instead of finding them, you can just watch a playlist front to back. We have our friend Jerry, thanks Jerry, and um, Rob. They're working together to produce chord sheets, so PDF shortcuts for all the chord shapes you encounter in that Barry Galbraith book. This download downloadable from jazzguitarlessons.net slash blog slash use the search function and search for Barry Galbraith studies. All right, I'll see you next time. Thank you. Mm -hmm.